Today we've got another club comparison for you on the YouTube channel. It is seven different hybrids from seven different manufacturers. I've got Thomas here to hit the shots. We've got Trackman to break down all the data. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you give this video a like, and you share in the comments which of these hybrids is your favorite. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing. Seven hybrids here, Thomas, um, each from a different brand, and we're kind of testing the most popular hybrids from the year of 2022. Some really good ones here. Uh, a lot of technology, a lot of uh, aiding golfers to get the ball into the air here with these. So we've got the five hybrid of each model, so that's gonna range, it looks like, from about 24-ish to 26-ish degrees, give or take. Uh, so talk to me about what you know about these clubs, uh, fitting them into customers over the last year, and what you think we're gonna see today. So forgiveness, mm -hmm. forgiveness is important. And then you're talking about that transition club yeah. between your longest iron in your bag and your fairway wood in your bag. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot of it comes to, down to that, that gapping piece. Mm -hmm. um, I specifically chose five hybrids yeah. um, because let's just face it, if I was to swing slower than what my normal club speed is with a four or a three hybrid, I wouldn't get the ball up in the air. Yeah. It wouldn't spin enough, it wouldn't climb high enough. So my goal is to do a moderate speed today. Yeah. Um, with five hybrids, just to compare the differences, not only, not only look, feel, but also the numbers and see how they always stack up against each other. If there's one that maybe gives you a little extra height, or if there's one that's a little lower overall too. So this would be a good comparison. Yeah, because I feel like for a lot of golfers, this is maybe that point in the bag where you talk about transition club, where that happens, where it's the six iron, maybe the seven iron, maybe it's the five iron in their bag where they're not getting enough height on it. They could use more forgiveness and launch, and that's where the hybrids come into play here. So uh, we need to kind of, well, let's first, let's go over the models that we have here. So um, we have the Shrixon ZX, we have the Cobra LTDX, the Titleist TSI2, the Ping G425, the Tour Edge E722, the TaylorMade Stealth, and the Callaway Rogue ST Max. So. Um, those are seven models and they are varying in loft here, Thomas, and we'll kind of go over that a little bit, but I think we actually have a 23 degree model. We also have up to 26, so a pretty wide range there. So we'll see some differences, but, um, and we also should talk about the shafts here too, because they're not all the exact same. Yeah, so you can talk about shafts and talk about like the hosel adjustments. The yeah. hosel adjustments, they're gonna be at their standard setting if you yeah. can adjust them. If they're bonded, obviously they're just gonna be five hybrids. Right. Um, golf shafts, so these are all going to be regular golf shafts yeah or regular standard length um, these are going to be like the stock options that the manufacturer okay. offer so they're not going to be the exact same golf shaft some of them will be yeah. but they'll be very very similar in weight and and profiles mm -hmm. sure all right well i think with that said we can get start hitting some shots here thomas and then we'll break down the data here soon let's do it hundred feet in the air wow ZX off to a good start. Pretty good. Goodness gracious. Found my new uh, 194 carry I was club. Say, that's a pretty good start. It's pretty good too. Lower spin. Well, that you hit that pretty far. Or what? Yeah. No. I don't think so. I feel like that spin is way lower than this. It's lower than the other one for sure. I mean, it's so far, it's about 1,000 RPMs less spin. Definitely significantly less spin. There's a solid golf shot. Zero feet of curve. All right. All right, it's pretty good. It's pretty good testing. All right, so Thomas, we've tested four models so far. G425, TSI2, LTDX, and ZX. You, got, you have the club heads in front of you. Feel, look, uh, talk to me about what you noticed. Yeah, so I mean, they're lo looking down at them. Um, some of them look a little larger, some look a little smaller looking down at. The Cobra looked like the smallest head okay. looking down at. Um, and then I guess the, the ZX 
also looked pretty small. Yeah. The the ping looked a little larger looking yeah. down at, and the TSI was maybe kind of in between the, okay. the others and the, the ping. I did notice, however, setting down all in their standard lie settings, you know, ping seemed more upright. Okay. what it looked to me. And I, I know that they obviously have their adjustability to yeah. go flatter with the, with the lie angle setting. Yeah. Um, but it just seemed like it was sitting a little more upright okay. to me looking down at a, a five hybrid. Okay. It's interesting you say that because as we can look quickly at the dispersion, you can just see there's, and it's not, you had three that went, you know, I mean, they were left of center. Um, you had a couple misses out to the right, but yep. it's one of the, I guess, it's probably more left than certainly the, uh, the, the blue circle of the TSI-2. So, I mean, you're, I guess there's some of that bias, but didn't necessarily show a ton in the, in the shots here. Um, if you're looking at all the data, you know, you're, you're spinning it right around 86 miles an hour with each club. Uh, TSI-2 gave actually a little bit of a boost in ball speed, a little bit more efficient strike. Um, Distance-wise, uh, result actually the, the furthest was LTDX. Now we notice that that's at 24 degrees, so I think yep. that's the lowest loft of the ones tested so far, I believe. So that might be the reason for that. But. It's going to come down to the spin. Yeah. Um, the, the the spin there. I mean, if you just look at the range, 36.74 to 43.02. Mm -hmm. There's a almost a 700 RPM difference there. Great. Um, between the LTDX and the ZX, the Ping G425, as expected, usually flies a little higher and spins a little bit more. Yep. Um, TSI 2 was also a little lower, lower spinning. Yeah, I mean, and also something to note, you're hitting all of these near 100 feet high. As such, I think that's worth noting for the player. I mean, I, a lot of golfers swing a hybrid at about the speed you're swinging this. Yep. And to see the ball get near 100 feet has uh, got to be a good thing for any golfer, considering any hybrid, to see that these models are flying high enough. Uh, specifically, the Ping and the ZX, you know, 96 and 98 feet on average, uh, plenty high in the air and enough stopping power if you're gonna go after a green on a par four or even a par five, um, you're gonna be able to get that ball you know, to stop when you need it to. Yeah, the goal is to try and swing approximate speed to what most golfers would with if they yeah. had played a five hybrid. Yeah. Um, I mean, generally, probably if your seven iron number is close to 80 miles an hour, this is probably where you'd probably fit yeah. in with a hybrid at about 86 miles right. an hour in, in club speed. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, you can see carry distance between 187 and 197. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've got a kind of a window there. We've got three models left to hit. Let's kind of see where these ones fit in. Oh my, it's a good golf shot. There's a lot of spin. It's a little right. Yeah, the farthest right of the day. Nice. Ball. How about that spin? I know. 23 degrees. Ridiculous loft for a, for a five hybrid. Crazy. All right, so Thomas, the last three models, uh, Stealth, Rogue ST Max, and Tour Edge E722. So talk to me about those three models. Did you see anything that jumps out in terms of the look and feel first? E722 just seemed very similar in looks to, say, TSI2, um, which I thought was interesting looking down at that. Um, I know, like, the Stealth looked a little bit more upright again, okay. looking down at a dress. And the Callaway Rogue ST Max, uh, maybe a little larger from heel to toe, but I could definitely notice it looked like it had a little less loft on it. And I think we'll we'll touch on the numbers here yeah. with with all of these clubs because let's face it, if you're a hybrid player, which probably most golfers yeah. watching this video right now are, pay attention to these numbers because there is some huge differences, right. which is going to help with regards to gapping. Yeah, and I think you know I think some of it is certainly um, can be attributed to the loft, and you know he, Thomas touched on it, Callaway. Rogue ST Max is the lowest loft at 23 degrees. We had a couple models that are at 26, some 25s. I think the, the ping was at 26, the G425, and then a lot of 25s, 24 in the Cobra uh, LTD X. So that's going to play a big role in these numbers because, as you said, there are some pretty big differences up there that we should go through here. Yeah, and I, I want to kind of jump right to the, the difference here. And if you just look, at ball speed here, you can see 
that the top two were separated by 0.1 miles an hour in bowl speed. Mm -hmm. But if you take a look here at the spin between these two, yeah. we're talking 13, over 1300, almost 1400 RPMs of spin between yeah. the E722 and the Rogue ST Max. Mm -hmm. Well, what is that going to do? Well, stopping power. E722, that thing stopped within about 13 yards. Yeah. Rogue ST Max stopped in about 20 yards. Yeah. So your landing angle is going to be shallower. So if you're looking for less spin out of a hybrid or a shallower landing angle, Rogue ST Max, great. You want it to far? There's your club right there. But if you need stopping power, you know, we, we want to get that, that landing angle to be a little higher. And we can see here, there's a couple mm -hmm. that were closer to 45 degrees. Yeah. Where some were quite a lot lower. Yeah, and I think, you know, at this part of the bag, you still, I mean, it depends again on what the player's actually looking for. Because like you said, there are players that just, they want the distance and not really care, they don't really care how it gets to that distance. Yep. If, they, if it needs to roll out to get to their 200 yard mark or whatever it is, uh, they're okay with it. Uh, but I think we still want to stress the importance of, you know, like the, the stopping power if you're trying to hit a target on a green per se. Um, you know, being able to stop that ball is important because, say that Callaway club, you're trying to hit that in, maybe there's a bunker protecting that green or something. Uh, it's not going to be as effective as, say, the Stealth here, which actually surpassed 100 feet in peak height on average for you. Uh, right. You were able to get that one, and it's going to land nice and soft for you on that green towards that target. Yeah, big difference. 102 versus, say, 84 feet mm -hmm. at, at, the, at the lowest stand. But let's maybe separate the clubs kind of a little bit differently here and maybe talk about which ones you know had the highest ball speed, which yeah. ones had the lowest ball speed. Um, so when we're testing here, G425, Stealth, the, the ZX, we're a little less on the ball speed. And, now, I would say ZX is maybe a little bit lower than, than the others because you can mm -hmm. see there's you know, much separation here in, in the middle. But yeah, E722, that was a little surprising. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little surprised that's got 25 degrees of yeah, lock on it. Yeah. And the fact that, that ball speed so there was, some juice there. was just as high and even not as much club speed as, say, the Rogue ST Max. So there's some juice there for sure. Right, right. And um, then uh, I, I, we already mentioned the spin. It's kind of a weird combination to have the highest ball speed and the highest spin rate right. in a group of clubs like this. That's not. Uh, a usual thing, but I think for this category of golfers, that's probably a really good combination to have because most golfers playing these clubs actually need some spin to get the ball in the air, maintain the height, maintain the trajectory, and that's a really good way to do it is have more ball speed and more spin. Right, and if you can't spin a hybrid, then you've got to look at a higher loft of fairway wood. Right. And that exactly. would be a, another discussion for another right. day there too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, spin the range. That, that astounded me for only swinging at 86 to 87 miles an hour, having a 13, 1400 RPM difference. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a big, big difference. And you can see there's a variation across the board here too. It's like 3100, 3600, yeah. 3900, 4200, 43. So it's not like just one. There's just kind of a wide range yeah. across the board. So it's definitely, it's, it's a spectrum. There's a definitely yeah. a spectrum of lower spinning hybrids to kind of the higher spinning hybrids. Because like you said, I mean, yes, loft is, is attributed to it, but I think with only two to three degrees in between there, to see that much of a difference, you know, from the E722 or even the ZX to the Callaway, that seems like a lot right. for just three degrees of loft or two degrees of loft. It, it's, it does seem, it seems, I mean, that's that's a club and a half. Right. I don't know how to spin there. Yeah, you can see carry distances. Um, you know, highest carry distance was the Rogue ST Max here. Two or four, I mean, it was seven yards further. Right. And then total distance, it was it was 10 yards further. Now we we touched on that 23 degrees mm -hmm. aloft on a on a five hybrid. That's basically a full hybrid by right. other manufacturers. Right, it is, and that's yeah. where um, I think, you know, and I want to say we should compare the Callaway like six hybrid, but I think it's it just shows that it's some, important to pay attention to that loft because you can't, you know, the, the Rogue ST Max five hybrid and the G425 five hybrid are different clubs. They're going to play differently. Um, because of that loft, and we see it here with the numbers. Yeah, and just know that, say, if you're interested in the Rogue ST Max, it's not adjustable either. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's bonded. So if you just buy the five off the rack thinking, hey, this is going to be a five hybrid to replace my five iron, right. your gapping might be a little, little off. So I do yeah. recommend at least ass assessing your gapping. Yeah. Um, let's One more before, before we go, we got to look at that dispersion map. Uh, let's see what we got there. Um, obviously, you're not used to hitting hybrids, so uh, this is a totally different thing for you. We got some really good shots up here on the board, so let's talk through a little bit of this. I'm not sure how much of this you're gauging in a fitting versus all those numbers, but yep. let's uh, let's talk about this here quick. Yeah, so I mean, this this was 35 swings in a row. There was not a single shot deleted out. Mm -hmm. Just kind of if you can see here, 
you know, if we, we expand this, you can see that you know, each one of these shots, this is, there's yeah. not one shot deleted out at all. So this was a really fair test on the good shots and the bad shots and, and yeah. everything in, in between. Um, but yeah, you can see how the Callaway, the red circle, oh, a little yeah. bit further up there. Uh, I mean, this version is going to be player dependent. Right. I mean, that's kind of the more important thing. We just know when a ball spins more, it's going to be shorter. Yeah. Ball spins less, it's going to be further. So this is right. on carry distance. You put that on total distance oh, yeah. now. It definitely gets like this. You it know, it, it gets like that, yeah. Stretches a little bit. Because, like, for example, the, the, cir the circle for the Callaway Rogue ST Max up there doesn't even touch the circle for, I think that's a ZX, right? Right, it's yeah. It's not even in it. Say, I mean, there's, so it, that loft is really playing a big difference here, I think. And then I think you got to touch on just forgiveness in general. Yeah. I mean, I fit a lot of people into Ping G425 yeah. for, uh, hybrids, and I'm always excited to see what the next G line hybrid's going to be. Forgiveness, right? You can yeah, see the distance, mm -hmm. total distance every single time. It was the tightest. Yeah. So there's not something to be said about that. Even if you catch a little off the toe, a little off the heel, a little fat, a little thin, it's going to go a very, very similar total yep. distance overall. Right. I think that's, that speaks volumes. And I think Ping's always been about consistency. This is another test that, that shows it here with the hybrid. So um, really good stuff here, I think. This is a, a fun test to do and to watch you just like a machine hit those shots out there um, and, and you know give us some good club speed averages to work off of and then to really see stark differences. I didn't expect to see that much of a gap in you know, the spin and also the performance of the E722 was, I think, really impressive. So that's maybe one golfers that maybe didn't have in their minds will now have if they're looking for a hybrid uh, right. going up here in yeah, the future. If you, if you need spin, it's definitely a, a good option. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, golfers, you know what to do. Schedule your fitting at Second Swing. We'll get you set up with that right transition club between the irons and the fairy wood in your bag, and you'll start hitting better shots into those long par fours or, par, or those par fives. Uh, Thomas, thanks for hitting the shots today, giving us the data. Um, really good stuff here.